In this video, what we're going to do is go over the new Redshift workflow for creating an ambient occlusion AOV. This was just released in the newest version of Redshift along with Cinema 4D 2025.3.1. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So to get started, I am in the asset browser. Um, I did just open up one of the example scenes, um, one of the architectural visualization. Uh, for what it's worth, it is using Redshift because that is where we'll find this new AOV. Uh, and, you know, the process here is pretty straightforward, but uh, just as a reminder, if you weren't used to creating the ambient occlusion um, AOV previously, what we'd have to do is come into our materials, create um, this ambient occlusion uh, utility material, uh, essentially, and then plug it into a custom AOV, which you can find in the AOV manager. That is no longer what we need to do. Instead, you do need to go to the AOV manager. Okay, and what you'll notice is we have a new ambient occlusion AOV listed here, not the legacy one. That's the one that used the ambient occlusion node, if you ever use that in your materials. Um, and yeah, previously we would use a custom, but now all we have to do is just drag in that ambient occlusion node. It's named AO, nice and short, which is great. Pretty much all the same options you would find in that utility uh, material. So. Um, you can see we still have the samples, bright and dark, spread, fall off, all of that stuff there. It's just kind of all baked into one AOV now, and we can just use this. So, you know, essentially when you create that, when you render something to your picture viewer, uh, you will get your AO, AOV created. Uh, now, if you've never done it before, um, you'll see your picture viewer render with your beauty pass. And what you can do while it is rendering, I've already pre-rendered this one, um, is switch to the layer tab and then switch to single pass. And that's where you will see um, your AOVs. You can click on any of the AOVs you've set up. I've only set up ambient occlusion. Uh, and then you can preview it. You can see if there's any issues, things like that on make adjustments, okay? Obviously you can still see it in your um, Redshift render view. All right, so if you open up your Redshift render view, you can start that. And after a second here, um, once this starts going, we'll be able to see it. I'm gonna turn off bucket rendering, though that's not a great idea, but you can see the ambient occlusion AO just in your render view here. Now I mentioned turning off bucket rendering not being a good idea, and it isn't because in order to see final quality uh, in terms of the, the noise and grain you might see, you do want bucket rendering turned on, okay? But that's pretty much it. You can make any adjustments you would like to here that you would make previously in the material. Now it's just all built in. And so with that, that will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care.